whenever I'm out in public, I always feel as if I'm never more than 10 or 20 meters away from the closest troglodyte. They're, they're always right there in my peripheral vision, you know, like every time without exception, right there with all of his or her band of inept inane friends and siblings close by, just standing there, blank faced, openly oblivious, <laughs> slowly drawling on about mundane things. Stupid shit. And whenever I see them, I'm, I'm picturing and placing them as early hominids, you know, like banging two fucking rocks together while squatting in the middle of a running stream, screaming incoherently to their god or gods, you know, trying to make fire. And I, I shouldn't have to feel like this, you know. I never brag about my intellect. I merely acknowledge it. And I find that the greatest hindrance to my happiness is having for the most part the strongest or, or maybe second strongest intellect of any person of any room I ever enter. And it's really sad because I usually am the cleverest cookie in the jar. And this isn't ego. This is just cold hard fact. Shit man. Look. No, look, I've won nearly every argument I've ever fucking had. And I never win arguments with facts. Uh, I gave up on trying to convince ignorant people with obvious truths when I was very, very young. Uh, I realized that no one gives a shit about facts, okay? Facts can be created, sold, molded, ducted, spouted out as gospel and actuality actually be as non-factual as the gospels so I don't use facts I ask questions to win arguments uh, I use prose structured traps I ask you questions where the only answer is mine and I'm the only one asking the questions and mostly well nearly everybody I have ever verbally joust with applies the same way by giving me a blank, dead, shark eyed look that says, What you have asked me is very, very scary and confusing. And having no other emotion on which to fall back on, were I not so stunned, I would be very, very angry. You see, from when I was in year six, if I didn't have any homework, my parents would make me read the dictionary or the thesaurus. Uh, so I had a much greater vocabulary than most of the children around me and five by five fold most of the adults in my small town, um, which bred a lot of contempt for me and a lot of bullying um, from both children and adults. But. I was very, very young and I came to this epiphany uh, that I can manipulate people in conversation, but that, that wasn't the epiphany. The epiphany was that I was going to be faced with that blank, dead-eyed stare uh, for the rest of my life. And I, um, I learned very early on not to do that, not to manipulate people for my own gain, you know? Well, to manipulate people, to make them nicer towards me. Um, but I, I did get angry. And I admit, it's on the bastard end of capers to play dumb and placate to someone throughout a conversation. You know, only to drop their jaw with some seemingly profound question or statement. Um, but then within like half a second, before it's really sunk in, just before they move their lip to answer, like with absolutely no condescension, no trace of arrogance, no malice in your voice, yet exuding infinite confidence 
and only wearing a very slight smile and only slightly offensive body language, very quickly ask, sorry, <laughs> what was your name again? It's this point that most people will usually realize that you were playing with their minds, obviously intellectual inadequacies, and without really coalescing into any linear thought process, and without any deep foresight, their vacuous lack of contents will start firing excitedly with unbridled indignation and ceaseless argumentative fervor. If they even have at least a basic vocabulary, they'll most likely call you an arrogant and or pretentious asshole. <laughs> Whilst not really realizing that that is precisely how they were just acting the very instance before you let fly your linguistic talents are so sharply and yet aptly outspoken. I mean, everyone reacts differently, right? But there are definitely well-defined archetype reactions. Um, I'll break it down like this. 40% of people will say something empty and walk away. 20% of people will like, be stunned and or won't understand what's going on. Uh, another 20% will resort to insults. 10% will subtly or not subtly try to instigate a physical confrontation. The, the remaining 10% will come back with some amazing piece of compelling information using a perfectly structured, grammatically flawless yet witty, valid argument. The last 10% much more rare, it's more truthfully about one or two percent of people. But see, it's arguments like these, or, or moments like that, I suppose, that seem to manifest in series, you know, without fail. Every two or three minutes after getting within a earshot of most humans, I, I dip out. I, I think it's because I can't handle always hearing them grunting in the background, you know, trying in vain to place the sounds in the right order, thinking if they speak their words quicker, they magically sound better. And it's not the heartless way they converse, it's this general social malaise that I see everywhere. It, it just makes me so uncomfortable whenever I'm in public. You know, I'm, I'm nearly always at that cringing point. And I don't hate or disrespect everyday nine to five, hardwood exterior, plastic interior people. I just don't feel or think how they feel or think. But I do, however, feel embarrassed for them. Um, embarrassed and slightly ashamed. You know, every day I find another reason to feel a little more ashamed, you know, to be associated with the human race. Oh, um, and alone, I forgot to mention that, uh, I always feel very, very alone. <laughs>